Whoa. Take a look at that, guys. I was definitely not expecting that. Oh, and there's more. Look over. I don't know if you guys can see in that alcove. Let me see if I can zoom in, maybe. There's more up in there as well. Wow. That's a deep, it's a fairly deep canyon. Take a look down there. Oh, man, I've got to check that out. All right, guys, I'm not sure if you can see everything, but I'm sort of on the other side of the canyon. I'm trying to aim, get over to these ruins. It looks like it might take a little bit of bushwhacking, but I think we can get over there. So let's go check it out. I'm going to be heading down down into that wash and then seeing if I can sort of walk around this buttress and go up the canyon to get to those ruins. So as I was analyzing this kind of down climb here to get to the bottom, I saw some pictograph, or, uh, yeah, pict pictographs, sorry, over on the other wall. Let me see if I can show you guys. So guys, I'm down at the bottom now, and these are the pictographs I saw from the top. They're kind of two, two swirls. And then as I was studying those, I noticed, take a look over here, it's very faint. There's a better shot, it's really faint. It's just to the left of these swirls over here. A little bit of bushwhacking, nothing too bad as of yet. Okay, <laughs> maybe a lot of bit of bushwhacking, but I think we're getting close. Okay, so I'm at the base of the cliffs. I've got to scramble up this, and then the big alcoves should be on the other side of this big berm of sand. <sighs> so I'm out of breath. But as I was climbing up, take a look at that. There's kind of this outline building over here. I think it's a granary. Wow, so cool. Just, it's just perched up here kind of on this high cliff before the, the bigger Pueblo. There's uh, this structure. I would guess it's a granary, just given the size of it and the size of the doorway slash window. And often the, the alcoves or the caves that were used as living quarters, they'll have a bunch of black coloration up on the roofs where, um, from just fires, you know, many, many fires, the soot has just blackened the top of the, the ceiling. I don't see that here. So here's the doorway. Doesn't look like much in there anymore. But look at that architecture. That was cool, but let's go check out the main attraction up here. <laughs> All right, we did it guys, we're up top here. Oh, wow. Oh, check this out. <laughs> Guys, look at this. This is what I just saw as I was coming up. You see all these indents in the rock. These are what's called Moki steps. They're basically steps carved into the sandstone by the ancient ones. They would use them to either get up on something that would otherwise be hard to. That's what it looks like here. It looks like they lead up top. Let's go. I'm curious how far out I can walk them. So I'm not sure how clear you guys can see these, but <laughs> I'm literally walking in the footsteps of the ancient ones. It's always so cool when you get to do that. It's a little hard to film this and walk since this is a rather steep 
area over there. But I'm curious where these where these lead to. It looks like they were probably using them to get up on top. This is kind of a steeper section here and they were probably using them to get up top there maybe for hunting maybe there was a source of water up there it's hard to say but it was definitely a shortcut for them okay so i'm coming up on the first dwelling over here oh wow look there's more more moki steps you know that's really not hard to get up in but wow <laughs> This is neat. Whoa. So I mentioned earlier about the smoke from fires, you know, blackening the tops of these caves and alcoves. I mean, take, <laughs> this is covered in soot. So you know there've been a lot of fires in this place over the years. Man, that's this is actually one of the blacker roofs I've ever seen. There it is looking out over the valley. Look how carefully they just pieced all of this together. You know, you've got these, these blocks here, the sandstone blocks, and then they filled it in with mortar kind of along. And then a lot of times this would have been fully plastered. So it would have fully been covered up. You wouldn't have actually seen these rocks. Um, but often over time that plaster is kind of the first thing to break down and so we don't always see it on some of the archaeological sites that we visit these days but look at how they built that thing right up to the cave wall there or the cave roof i mean take a look at these wooden beams hanging up it's in this window frame here those pieces of wood are Gosh, probably at least seven, eight hundred years old. Just crazy to think about. So one last thing I noticed here, I'm about to leave and head to the main site, but then I saw all of these basically grinding areas. So you guys see all these imprints here, these indentations. That's where they would have taken a rock, we call it like a mono, kind of a big, big grinding stone, and they would have used this natural sandstone in here to grind their grain mostly probably corn and so they would grind it there and i would imagine they would just kind of let it trickle down here it might be hard to tell in the video but that's kind of like a slow a slight slant and so all that corn as they ground it up probably just would have ran downhill because of gravity they probably had like a basket or a pot or something down here to to gather that up here's the main site The first thing you see when you walk into this ruin is what I believe is a kiva. A kiva at this time probably was like a ceremonial structure, a kind of subterranean, like partially underground structure that they would have used for ceremonial purposes, like religious ceremonies and things. And I'll take you guys over here. There's, looks like there's a second one over here. Wow. Yeah, another one. So here's a closer shot of the second kiva. And as I got up here, I realized there's a, there's a third kiva. This is insane. But you can see these columns here. Just the artisanship that went into crafting these places. They would have had a fire pit somewhere down here, probably right here. I believe that might be that sort of stone you see, that square rectangular stone in the middle. Yeah, so coming over here, you can see the third kiva. Again, another rounded structure. Back behind here, perhaps some of the room blocks, meaning the places where the, the people actually lived. When this was actually being occupied, they, the roofs probably would have reached up to the ceiling or close to it and just over time, they've fallen down to what we see now. I haven't been over in this part of the ruin yet. Let's go. So this is the last section of the ruin, kind of the, the more northern side of it. You can see there's kind of a big square room here. 
again, kind of like the kivas, except rather than being circular, it is a square. Look at all that work that went into building this. And up here, you know, this, this would have probably almost been like a two-story building back in the day. I don't want to walk back there because I don't want to step on the ruins. You know, we want to try to treat these things as good as we can, not walk on them, not lean on them. They've been here for centuries, if not thousands of years, and hopefully they can continue like that. It's almost like decorative. You see these pieces of red stone, and some of it's more yellowish white, but this is over a doorway here. I'm not sure what that originally would have led into. It's fairly small, almost more like a window than a door. I just thought that was really cool how they've just kind of put these decorative little pieces in the mortar there. Here it is in the bigger context of it. I don't want to touch it, but you can see where up in this mortar you can see fingerprints up there. Just from when they took this mud in their hands and daubed it in between these rocks, that's just Wow. So I'm heading back out, I dropped back down. But man, that really impressed me. I was not expecting that. I knew that there were some ruins in this area, uh, but I didn't expect anything of that like size or complexity. I mean, there were, there were at least three kivas, there were multiple housing structures, outstanding granaries. I mean, we had Moki steps. That was really cool to get to walk in those like footsteps, you know, literally in their footsteps. One thing I was kind of speculating about was the fact that I saw so many Moki steps carved there in places where you normally wouldn't necessarily see them. I mean, in my experience, the, the ancient ones seemed like they were way more <laughs> athletic and far better climbers than just the average person today, judging by where they would build some of their, their uh, structures. Uh, but some of the, the steps there seemed, yeah, they just didn't seem necessary, which I thought was, was intriguing. And I mean, this is completely <laughs> just my own hypothesis, but I wonder with all of the, the kivas there, if this was kind of like a gathering place for uh, some of the local people. And they perhaps had a lot of elderly people coming in, you know, sort of hiking in from some outlying settlements and dwellings. And because of that, they were a little more cautious of wanting to uh, just make it more accessible. I mean, it, I don't know, just, just kind of an interesting observation. Thanks for coming along. Hit like, hit subscribe. If you want to see some more explorations in the canyon country, 